So here's our shutter assembly and I'll start taking this apart. I'm going to remove the release over here and clean it, remove any old grease, lubricate it, put it back in the fullness of time. These screws are often hard to remove and it's because glue gets down into them from the other side when the leatherettes are being put on. So if people have been over enthusiastic with the adhesive, these can be fun to get out. With a well fitting screwdriver and a good technique you'll get them out. Remove this and hook that lever. There's a little bit of dirt on the front here, nothing bad. Okay, so from here on in. These screws are tight. Unusually so. Take this buffer pad off. The mirror comes up against this buffer pad. It's just a piece of leather. Take that bracket off. Two spacer washers. There's a pinion here. And this little rack. A screw here. Which is usually very tight. That's quite normal. Occasionally you'll find them when they're loose. Pull out that pinion and that little bush that it runs around. Now I'll see if I can unhook this arm. There's a little plastic insulator on the end of this arm. Sometimes you can't get it tucked in underneath. That time it came out very easily. Sometimes you have to move this bracket out of the way. A single screw here. That is very tight. It's very unusual for the screws to be this tight. I don't think anyone's put thread locker on them. No. This pinion has a tiny shim washer on the top. Space the washer. Let's get that. Make sure you don't lose that. Here's our pinion. This is the little lever that opens the blades for viewing. There's another little shim washer underneath it here. Often that's very reluctant to come off the shaft. It's not falling off today, so we'll leave it. We've got a flash contact soldered on here that's got to come off. And there are four screws here, here, down in this hole, and this one. It have to come out. I'll go and desolder that wire and then we can take the shutter off the front. Right, well that's out of the way. Now someone's been very enthusiastic with the black paint down there, so I'm just going to hit that with a bit of acetone, soften that paint up. That flash contact might be effectively glued in position. Okay, now the shutter should come off. 
here it does. I'll pop the front section to one side. Here we've got the shutter body complete. We have four screws hold the shutter body into the case. There's one on the side here, that's very unusual but that's what they have on the reflex four. Then three pretty much where you'd expect to find them at the back. I normally would have removed the front control rings by now but this time I haven't. I don't remember whether that causes a problem or not. See, no, the shutter lifts off fine. Okay, so there's our little gear, little pinion, and this one, which couples the meter to the uh, dials at the front of the camera. And here's the shutter itself. Here's the front control rings. Let's get rid of that little pinion, get that out. There's a little ball here, that's our detent for the shutter speeds. And this little cover plate. Three screws here hold the front on. They're sometimes locked in place with clear lacquer. Be aware of that. If they look a little bit yellow and got a glassy look to them, they're probably covered in lacquer and you're best to use some acetone or something to free that up. Otherwise you'll end up with problems. Right, so there's our front control rings. Look a little bit greasy. Nothing too bad. And here's the the main plate that the shutter fixes to. Again, that's quite greasy, it's, uh, but nothing unusual. And the shutter itself, let's have this back in the picture. This needs to be stripped down. Let's see what I've got here for containers. I have a sufficiency, I think. Look. Okay. Right, so the front retainer ring that just clips on. Let's unhook that. The shutter speed settings cam plate will lift off. This little lever latches the uh, cam in here in place. Here's the, ma the main pinion for the cocking the shutter. Remove this. It's got a little hook here which hooks onto a bracket on that um, self timer. It's uh, an awkward arrangement. We'll get that self timer out. You can probably see it better then. The Reflex 4 doesn't have a flash sink lever. So your flash sink is always, your only flash sink is an X sink for electronic flash. And here on this lever is a little notch. That's where that spring that I showed you hooks onto. It's really awkward to get the spring seated there, or can be, but that's where it goes. I'll unhook the main spring here from the main cam. Look at the state of that. That one looks very good, suspiciously good. Two screws here 
hold this plate in place. Now there's a return spring on here. I'm just going to unhook that so it doesn't fly everywhere. Take that plate off. Cover the screw. Take off the moving flash contact. Take the cam off. Two screws hold the retard gear train in place. The shutter release lever. Now there's no return spring for the setting lever on this camera because the retard, the self timer, instead of having a slot in it, just has a hole at the end. So it's fixed rigidly to that arm and as that comes back it pulls this lever back to the rest position. Okay, so we've got a screw here and there's a spring, return spring for the B lever. Do you want that screw out? We can get the B lever unhooked, I have, and we'll get this spring off its post. Now the other spring that you commonly see in these shutters which sits about here is not present because that was only used for the uh, flash sync mechanism in the earlier shutters. Okay, that's all that needs to come off the front of the shutter. At the back of the shutter we've got th three screws here which hold this bracket in place. Take that bracket off. Here's the setting lever for the self timer. And we've got the shutter body. And the shutter body is held together with three screws that hold the mechanism plate and the case together. Of course there's no diaphragm to worry about because that's in each individual lens. Lift the case off. The case has got nothing in it except that plate. If the, shutter, if the shutter was greasy, it'd be worth taking that plate off to make sure that when you, you can clean any oil out that might be behind it. If the shutter's not greasy, there's no point in disturbing it. I check those three screws to make sure they're, they're not loose. And very occasionally one might loosen up and if it backs up enough it'll catch on the blades. Cause you no end of groove. Here are the shutter blades and they all look to be in very good condition so they should be easy to clean no traces of oil on them at all and our mechanism plate it's a bit stiff it may be that there's not enough lubricant where that detent runs over that pin if I unhook it and poke it to one side I'll get a better idea. Yeah I think that's the case because when I unhook that there's, there's now, now no friction at all to speak of. So basically that needed a touch of lubricant there. I'm just going to test that. I'll just lubricate that with a bit of uh, molybdenum paste. And check the action. Yeah that's that's much smoother. So yeah that was certainly the case. Three screws here hold the lens tube in position. The lens tube in turn holds the blade actuating ring in position. 
that's the bracket that holds the main spring. Here's the lens tube, the blade actuating ring, and the mechanism plate itself stripped down. There's not much to see there. All of this just needs to be cleaned with naphtha and put back together, lubricating as I go. Alright, I've been cleaning all these components up, so hopefully things will go back together fairly smoothly without too much delay. First we'll get the blade actuating ring back on the mechanism plate. Weave that in underneath that spring so that I can get it hooked into place. Like that. Hook that detent spring into place. Take the lens tube, put that in place. The lens tube only goes in one position. You can't get lost with that. Now there are three screws which hold this down. We're using the two short screws. The long screw goes through where the bracket for the main spring goes. It's easiest to get that bracket back in place after you have some other pieces in place. Otherwise it makes it awkward to get at things. Okay, so that's in place. Let's check that the blade actuating ring moves smoothly. That's good. Now I've got no lubrication there at all at the moment, but it's moving smoother than it did before than before I cleaned it. I'm going to lubricate that with a bit of graphite powder and work that in. I just want to work that in between the blade actuating ring, the uh, mechanism plate and the lens tube. That appears to be good. I'll just go and blow that excess out. Okay, well I'll get this into the blade's open position, which is that way, and put my shutter blades back in position. The shutter blades should have been pretty non-controversial. They look pretty good, but when I had a close look at them, there were some marks on some of them, like scuff marks. This is blade number two, it's a special shape, it has to clear that hole there. So the back of the blade is relieved. So I polished these blades with brassy. And of course polishing the blades with brass so means then you've got to give them an extra good clean after that with naphtha to make sure that you've removed any residual polish because you don't want to be leaving abrasives in the shutter. And blade number six is the cover blade and the cover blade's just a little narrow blade. There you go. They're all in place, so I'll just close those blades slightly to make it easier to lift the case over the top. I have the case here, and what we need to do is get that round peg through this square hole. Why do we have a square hole? Who would know? Someone had a funny sense of humour. <laughs> 
like that. Get that back on my block of wood and I'm holding this down. I can check that the blades open and close and they do. So that means that everything's in position and nothing fell out of position. I can put my three case screws in. Now the shutter was a little bit um, sticky. Blade actuating ring was a bit reluctant to move smoothly. That wouldn't have been helping things, but uh, most of our problems were probably behind the shutter in this section. That's where things tend to get sticky. That looks pretty good. I can see a couple of marks on those blades. I must have picked them up from somewhere. I'll just give those a... See if they wipe off. I may have had uh, some something on my tweezers. Yeah, they look wonderful now. Great. Is that, yes, they should be. Right, well with that in place, we can put this in place. That's the settings lever for the um, self-timer. That just drops in there. We don't have to get it behind a spring like you would on other shutters because there is no spring. This is the retainer. Right, just tighten those three screws up. Yeah, that moves smoothly. Okay, get round to assembling the components to the mechanism plate now. Here I've got the front plate from an old reflex camera that I've gutted. It makes a marvellous stand for working on the shutter. It's like it was made to measure. Right. So what do we want next? Oh, okay. So the B lever can go on next. We want its return spring. Which goes over the post here. There's a groove in that post that that spring sits into. Lift that spring back. I'll move this into the blades open position that'll allow the B lever to drop into place hook this B lever in behind its return spring and that's held in place with a screw that's got a groove around the head on earlier shutters that would have had a spring wrap around it on this shutter it does not I don't know why they didn't just use a plain screw there. I presume they had plenty of these and decided to use them up. Right, put that in place. Make sure the B lever moves. Hold that back with my finger. Pull the blade actuating ring back. Close the shutter blades. The flash contact can go on next. That goes on this post. And the bracket here goes on on top of that. This has the latch on it that holds the main cam in the cocked position. Let's get that flash contact out from underneath. That's down on it's there, that's all sitting there nicely. So we've 
plain screw at this end. Whoops, that's just trying to fall away and get lost. Might go mad and demagnetise my screwdriver shortly. Perhaps I should have two sets, one magnetised and one unmagnetised. Alright, so the spring goes at this end. That's held in place with a shoulder screw. Making sure that screw spring is not trapped underneath the screw head, that it's free to revolve around the screw head. Pick the end of the spring up, lift it in behind the arm, there's a little notch in the back of that arm that, that spring hooks into. Yeah, that's sprung loaded. The shutter release is this piece. I'll just put the briefest wipe of lebanon and paste on that. This goes in here. It must hook under the B-lever so it lifts the B-lever up from the rest position and the spring on the end of this has to come all the way around to here. If I can lift that up, swing it into place. Oh look that went without a fight. That's very good. Now this is a simpler shutter in some ways because of course we don't have the flash sync mechanism of earlier shutters. Okay, so a little bit of molybdenum paste on the detent spring for the blade actuating ring. And on these two posts on the blade actuating ring that contact the main cam. I've got the main cam here. I'll just give it a wipe through the centre of that. And the main surface to do here is that curved edge. That's where it runs against the uh, retard gear train. And if that's completely dry, it'll, it'll be very rough and it'll cause grief. Okay, so we'll swing that into position. We can put the bracket in place there now. That's held in place with the third of those screws, which is slightly longer than its two mates. Well, about a quarter of a millimeter I'd say. One day I'll get out the verniers and I'll actually measure that. It won't be today. The main spring here, I'll just give that a wipe with some lebanon paste through the center. The pin at the bottom there hooks into a tiny hole in that cam. And then the spring stretches out and hooks in behind that bracket. So now, if I cock this, hold this down, the shutter will fire. Let's give that surface a wipe with some molybdenum paste. That shutter is ready to have the retard gear train and the self timer put in. And they uh, have just finished in the ultrasonic cleaner, so I'll pull them out, blow them out, lubricate them with some graphite powder, and I'll put them in the shutter. Okay, well, let's put the speed trains in place. The first thing I want to do is cock the shutter. 
that allows me to get the retard gear train into position. I pull back this little tab here because it catches behind a tab on the blade actuating ring. Get this seated correctly, that's better. A pivot pin, screw at this end, serves as the pivot because you can adjust the position of the retard gear train. Make sure that's pulled back, that's good. Yes, so you, you can adjust the position of the retard gear train at this end to swing it in towards the centre of the shutter for greater engagement with the cam that slows the shutter up and if you swing it outwards you get lesser engagement with the cam so the shutter speeds up right now I'll get the self timer in place to get that over its pin This is always awkward. Just running it down a bit so I've got room to get this in. Yep. 